morning. We went to the market today. It's an outdoor market and they have clothing and shoes and everything. And I actually got a couple of things and I couldn't get a pair of shoes that I really liked because we don't have space in the suitcase. But anyway, now we have to go to the train station. We missed our train by one minute. Yeah, so today the train decided to come right on time. Anyway, we can't... And we didn't get the next one because it was a different company. So we're just waiting for the company that we booked for their next one to be here. And we're gonna take that one. But we still have like half an hour. And we're missing quality time again, like yesterday. That we could be, you know, walking around in the city. Yeah, it was a freaking procedure to come down here. I still cannot believe what just happened. Basically, we waited for a whole hour and then got on the next Italo train. By the way, they almost never check the tickets. We took like six trains by now, they only checked once, all right? And then this person comes to check the tickets and I show him the previous tickets and we tell him that, you know, we missed our train for one minute and we waited an hour to get on the next one. And he was like, uh, that ticket is not valid. He basically made us pay 130 euros for both of us to be on that train. Even though like the actual ticket price was like, 40 each it should be 80 max and he made us pay more than that i'm guessing he fined us or something for taking the train without telling anyone i don't know i don't even know why they work like this because there should be an option to you know get the next train if you miss yours or like do something last minute if something like that happens it, it can't be just you know pay that much money because it was way too much for a, for a one hour trip from Bologna to Milan. So we're, I am very pissed and I'm definitely filing a complaint. I do not care because Italians are so kind, the kindest people. That one, he was rude, really rude. He was not nice. Even though we got on the, on the next train, he should have spoken in a, you know, better manner to us or like, you know, offered us an alternative. I'm done with Italian trains. Yesterday was delayed for almost two hours and we didn't even get a sorry from them. Like not even a refund, no nothing. And then today we missed it for one minute and we had to pay 130 euros. That is unacceptable. We are in Milan now with the worst mood possible, but we're gonna try and fix that. We're gonna rest for a little bit and go out. Okay, this is our hotel, it's very pretty. You go in here and there's a full-size mirror. Let's go. And on the right, it's the bathroom. It's very pretty. Pretty. Like the soaps and everything. Mm -hmm. Then we go through here, we put our suitcase here and this is the room. Pretty nice, like it. We bought. <laughs> Milan is not a walkable city, so we got metro tickets. Finally, seeing the Duomo in person. It's as pretty as the pictures.
delayed filming this part of the video for so long because even speaking about this just makes me feel so bad and so sad by talking about it it's like you're reliving it and it just sucks basically right after that last clip at the metro that you saw my phone was stolen from me and what you will not be seeing in this vlog is a lot of crying it felt like ages what i went through the rest of that day and obviously the next couple of days as well and that's why in the clips that will follow my eyes are like red and puffy it's because of the crying and i can barely smile like i'm kind of forcing myself to smile the next day. In a week it's gonna be two months since this happened. I wanted to explain so that you know why my mood is like that after the incident and so that you're careful if you ever travel to Milan. I know it's not just Milan but it's just because it's such a big city the theft rates are very high. I know it could happen in any place in the world. What I'm just trying to say is to be careful in general wherever you go. And I'm always careful. Exactly because I travel so much, I know that I have to protect my personal belongings. So I always do. And that is why I felt so stupid when this happened to me. Basically, we got off the metro. I was holding my phone in, in one hand and my camera in the other. Obviously, this is a new phone. I had to. I hold them both very tight because I like I always do and then I put my phone in my puffer jacket's pocket for one second in order to adjust my belt and when I go to grab it again it's not there it was literally one second that this lasted and that was it my phone was stolen someone must have seen me holding it and like kept an eye on me so that they could just grab it at any given moment. I started shaking, my whole body was shaking so much and I told my mom, I turned around to see if someone, you know, was holding it or if it fell on the floor. When the train left, I went to the, um, whatever they're called and like saw if it fell in the tracks and I started not being able to breathe and how, like, like I said, I was shaking so I think I was going through a panic attack at that moment because I couldn't breathe. I felt like my lungs were heavy and I couldn't get the air in because the people there, everybody saw me panicking and um, there was one girl that came to me and she was like, what happened? And I was like, my phone just got stolen and um, my mom was like, should we call the police, do something, report it? She was like, Italian police is not gonna do anything, I'm sorry. We run back to the hotel. Thankfully, I had my laptop with me, so I went on iCloud on my laptop. I couldn't log in iCloud because another thing that made me feel stupid was that I had the two-factor authentication on, which means that you get a code on your phone every time you want to log in on a different device and you put that code on the other device and you log in. So I didn't have my phone with me, I couldn't log in, but I could access find my iPhone. I immediately removed the device from iCloud, which I knew would mean that I would never find my device again, but it was the most logical thing to do because, you know, Apple has a procedure that makes you do when you, lo when you lose your phone, but like I wasn't in the right mind at that point to like 
go online and be like, what to do when you lost your phone? No, I was panicking, obviously. Um, but still it wouldn't help because the first step says that you have to report as lost and you basically put a number in so that the person who finds it calls you on that other number. My phone was 100% stolen because right after it happened, we called my number and it was ringing and then suddenly it just switched off. So, I mean, I had battery, so it's not that it just magically switched off. So it was obvious that it was stolen from me. Anyway, so I thought that the most logical thing to do was remove my device from iCloud so that if they reset the phone so that it's empty and they could sell it that wouldn't mean that all my photos videos everything would be gone like my phone was connected to the to iCloud I guess if they were if they were deleted on the phone they were gonna be deleted on my iCloud as well so I thought it's better to save my stuff than the device which again made me feel so bad because I ha I've had that phone for three years. It was the iPhone XR and it was in a very good condition. I would definitely have it for another year before I changed. And then a whole procedure started for me. The phone number that was stolen was my Greek number. I still have my secret number, which was in a different old phone so i had to call vodafone they had to block that number from being able to make any calls so that i wouldn't be charged and for them to give me a new sim with the same number so that i could also access icloud with that i had to go there in person and if a friend of mine went in my behalf i would have to write them an authorization which i had to do online and in order to do that i would i needed my bank details which I couldn't access because I also called my bank, my Greek bank, and they blocked everything, web banking, blah, 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 so that the, that person wouldn't be able to use it if they somehow got on my phone. And so I was locked out of it as well. And because that bank makes you change your password every three months for safety, I couldn't remember the last one that I put. But anyway, dealing with the bank was so frustrating because I was on hold um, when I called like three times and for some reason the other old phone that I had kept cutting me off and then I called from my mom's phone web banking could only block the web banking couldn't do anything else I had to call a different number I did they weren't replying it was also a Friday when this happened it was Friday night so everything was closed and then the the weekend was coming so again I wouldn't be able to do anything after I took care of the most important stuff, which is like removing my cards from Apple Pay, calling my bank, calling my phone number provider, I started changing all my passwords. Imagine all social media, email, Spotify, Netflix, like everything that you can imagine having on your phone, which was a procedure. Oh, we also went to the Apple store there in Milan and they said that they weren't able to help me access my iCloud because I removed it from Find My iPhone, which wouldn't matter because even if I did have it on Find My iPhone, what were we gonna do? First of all, it was switched off. Second of all, even if it switched on, what were we gonna do? Like run in Milan trying to find my device? That couldn't happen and the police would, would not help, obviously, for a missing phone because that happens all the time in, in Milan. Yeah, and basically I requested Apple to uh, online to change my phone number so that I would be able to access my iCloud. And um, they needed 24 hours to decide. And then when they did, they were like, yes, you can change your phone number in six days. And so I went a week, a whole week without knowing whether all of my stuff was safe if i had it or not so during that one week <laughs> i traveled back home i ran errands bought a new phone traveled to london traveled to iceland and as soon as i arrived to iceland that's when i finally had access to my icloud so as you can imagine those are the next two travel vlogs that you're gonna see i spoiled it i bought iPhone 13. Thankfully, I had my mom with me. She was there for me, both emotionally, but also, you know, helping me with anything I needed. The next day was our last day in Italy, so we were like, we might as well go out and try to make the most of it, even though it didn't go that well, as you will see now. Sorry if my mood is really negative in the clips that will follow even in the clips that happened before. The thing with the tickets that happened in the train was the same day that my phone got stolen. It was just 
a very very bad day yeah excuse me if my mood is so negative in this vlog i was thinking of not posting it but then i was like we shouldn't just just show our happy moments and highlights and everything because that was a very bad thing that happened to me and i wanted to share it on here especially since i was already vlogging on that trip obviously that day i could not get my camera out and you know explain all of that i'm telling you it's been almost two months and it's only now that i felt kind of ready to talk about it on camera i just want to finish by saying i know there are way far more important things happening in the world right now but that doesn't make the experience that i went through any less worthy of emotion so everything that's going on shouldn't mean that i'm not allowed to cry and be sad about what happened for me that was a first and i hope a last anyway i managed to get through this and say all of that be very careful when you travel that is my biggest tip ever <laughs> not a tip i mean it goes without saying that you need to be careful because this could have happened anywhere in a public street in a public means of transport in anywhere and i'm not saying it for the money that i had to pay you know to get a new device or for the actual device itself but it's all the stuff that we have on our phones nowadays it's just so much especially for what i'm doing that i you know film videos all the time dancing and like my youtube videos and stuff because i have a lot of clips for the vlog that i've taken on my phone like that's the worst part of losing your memories your photos in your videos and then also it's like your notes your contacts all of that i'm gonna let you finish the rest of the vlog if you want and i'll see you in the next one hopefully more cheerful Shouldn't expect anything better. But we came to the Santa Maria delle Grazie church where is the painting of the Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. Di Capri Vianavo. And the tickets are sold out, so we're not gonna see that. Now it's four. If it was any other Saturday, we would have been able to go in.
judge me, I've missed sushi. I couldn't help it. And also my mom wanted sushi, so last meal in Italy is gonna be sushi. And we had so much pasta and pizza that we're good to go. for watching this video and listening to me about my incident subscribe if you want to see the next travel vlogs that are coming i also have a couple of sit down dance videos that are coming the only thing is that i have to edit them <laughs> which is the most dreadful part hit the bell to get notified like this video i mean <laughs> i don't know how you could have enjoyed this because it's all just bad things happening to me but if you felt my pain <laughs> like this video. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. See you next time.